a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Eddie Brock Eddie Brock is a fictional character appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. The character was created by David Michelini and Todd McFarlane. And his earliest appearance was a cameo in Web of Spider-Man 8, before making his first full appearance in The Amazing Spider-Man 00 as the original and most well-known incarnation of Venom. The character has since appeared in many Marvel Comics publications, including his own series Venom. Introduced as a villain of Spider-Man, the character becomes an anti-hero, working with and against superheroes. In the original version of the story, Eddie Brock is a journalist who exposes the identity of a serial killer only for the real killer to be caught by Spider-Man, thus he accused the wrong man. Disgraced and suicidal, he comes into contact with an alien symbiote, rejected by Peter Parker. The symbiote bonds with him and they become Venom, together seeking out revenge against their mutual enemy. Though he repeatedly comes into conflict with Spider-Man, he also attempts to operate as a hero, albeit a violent one, seeking to save those he deems innocent. In 2008, after being separated from the Venom symbiote, he gains a new symbiote and becomes the anti-hero anti-venom. However, that symbiote is sacrificed to help cure the Spider Island epidemic during the 2011 storyline. In 2012, he was bonded to the Toxin symbiote. Though he is a human with no powers, the Venom symbiote suit bestows upon him a range of abilities including many of the powers belonging to Spider-Man, the symbiote's original host. Debuting in the modern age of comic books, the character of Eddie Brock has featured in other Marvel-endorsed products such as animated television series, video games, merchandise such as action figures, and trading cards. And the Spider-Man 3 feature film in which he was played by actor Topher Grace, Eddie Brock is portrayed by Tom Hardy in the film 2018 Venom. Brock's incarnation of Venom was rated 33rd on Empire's 50 Greatest Comic Book Characters, and was the 22nd greatest villain on IGN's 100 Greatest Comic Villains of All Time. Comics journalist and historian Mike Conroy writes of the character, what started out as a replacement costume for Spider-Man turned into one of the Marvel Web Slinger's greatest nightmares. Creation and Conception Writer David Michelini and artist Todd McFarlane are generally credited with the character's creation, based on a number of plot ideas and concepts from various other creators. The question of who created the character of Venom became an issue of contention in 1993 when Michelini wrote to the comic book industry magazine Wizard, which had referred to Michelini in issue 7 as, co-creator of Venom. In his letter, Printed in issue 1, Michelini wrote that he was the character's sole creator, while saying also he believed that without McFarlane the character would not have attained the popularity it did. Writer Peter David corroborated Michelini's view in his, but I digress, column in the June 4, 1993 Comics Buyer's Guide, in which he stated that Michelini discussed the ideas behind the character with him at the time of its creation. At that time, David was the writer on The Spectacular Spider-Man and wrote the Sin Eater storyline from which Eddie Brock's backstory would be derived, well before McFarlane was assigned to the art duties on Amazing. Because the artist who illustrates a character's first published appearance is generally credited as its co-creator, Venom represents a complex situation. Because the costume from which Venom's appearance is derived was not designed by McFarlane, Eric Larson responded to Michelini's letter with one of his own that was printed in Wizard 3, in which he dismissed Michelini's contributions to the character, arguing that Michelini merely swiped the pre-existing symbiote and its powers to place it on a character whose motivations were poorly conceived. One-dimensional, unbelievable, and cliched. Larson also argued that it was McFarlane's rendition of the character that made it commercial. The pre-existing elements that dealt with the symbiote costume itself, to which Michelini did not contribute, have also been noted. 
The original idea of a new costume for Spider-Man that would later become the character Venom was conceived of by a Marvel Comics reader from Norwich, Illinois named Randy Shuler. Marvel purchased the idea for $220 after the editor-in-chief at the time, Jim Shooter, sent Shuler a letter acknowledging Marvel's desire to acquire the idea from him, in 1982. Shuler's design was then modified by Mike Zeck, becoming the symbiote costume. For example, Shooter came up with the idea of switching Spider-Man to a black and white costume. Possibly influenced by the intended costume design for the new Spider-Woman, with artists Mike Zeck and Rick Leonardi, as well as others, designing the black and white costume. Writer-slash-artist John Byrne asserts on his website that the idea for a costume made of self-healing biological material was one he originated when he was the artist on Iron Fist to explain how that character's costume was constantly being torn and then apparently repaired by the next issue, explaining that he ended up not using the idea on that title. But that Roger Stern later asked him if he could use the idea for Spider-Man's alien costume. Stern in turn plotted the issue in which the costume first appeared, but then left the title. It was writer Tom DeFalco and artist Ron Friends who had established that the costume was a sentient alien being, and that it was vulnerable to high sonic energy during their run on the amazing Spider-Man that preceded Michelini's, regardless. Peter David's position is that Michelini is the sole creator, since the idea of creating a separate character using the alien symbiote was Michelini's, as was Eddie Brock's backstory. And that without the idea to create such a character, the character would not have existed. In an interview with Tom DeFalco, McFarlane states that Michelini did indeed come up with the idea of Venom and the character's basic design. However, he contends that it was he who gave Venom his monster-like features, he claims. I just wanted to make him kooky and creepy, and not just some guy in a black suit. This dispute arose at a time when the merits of artists as collaborators and writers were being debated in the industry. A discussion prompted by the popularity of artists such as McFarlane, Larson, and other founders of Image Comics. Venom's existence was first indicated in Web of Spider-Man 8, when he shoves Peter Parker in front of a subway train without Parker's spider sense warning him though only Brock's hand is seen on panel. The next indication of Venom's existence was in Web of Spider-Man 4, when Parker has climbed out of a high-story window to change into Spider-Man, but finds a black arm coming through the window and grabbing him, again without being warned by his Spider-Sense. The character would remain unseen and inactive until Amazing Spider-Man editor Jim Salakrab required a villain for that book's 300th issue and Michelini suggested a villain consisting of the alien symbiote grafted onto the body of a human female, seeking revenge for the deaths of her husband and miscarried baby who would accidentally die as the unfortunate result of Spider-Man battling another supervillain. Salakrup accepted the suggestion, but changed the character to a male, and the female character's plot was also abandoned. Michelini then devised the Eddie Brock identity. Michelini contends that the plots for issues 98-299, as well as the visual descriptions of the character, were written and bought by Salakrap before McFarlane was ever assigned to the book. Backstory The 1993 limited series Venom, Lethal Protector describes Brock's history before bonding with the symbiote. As a child, Edward Charles Allen Brock is raised in a Roman Catholic household in San Francisco. Eddie's mother dies from complications during his birth and as a result his father is cold and unaffectionate towards him. Eddie excels in academics and sports in an attempt to earn his father's approval, but does not succeed. In college, Brock switches his major to journalism after reading an article on the Watergate scandal. After graduating, he moves to New York City and obtains a job as a journalist for the Daily Globe. Though he proves himself to be a highly talented journalist, his father still only treats him with indifference. As a reporter, Brock investigates the serial killer Sinita and is contacted by Emil Gregg, who claims to be the killer. Pressured by the authorities to reveal the killer's identity, Brock writes an expose announcing Gregg as the Sinita. However, 
The real Sinita is caught by Spider-Man, and Brock is revealed to have been interviewing a compulsive confessor. Brock is fired from his job in disgrace and divorced from his wife. Unable to find reputable work, he is forced to work for tabloid magazines, and his father ceases communication with him entirely. Brock becomes obsessed with gaining revenge against Spider-Man, blaming him for catching the real Sinita. Brock takes up bodybuilding to reduce stress, but his anger and depression remain. Meanwhile, Spider-Man uses the sound of bells at a church to remove his symbiote costume after realizing it is attempting to permanently bond with him. His professional and personal life shattered. Brock contemplates suicide and goes to the same church, where he prays to God for forgiveness. The symbiote, having waited in the rafters of the church since leaving Spider-Man, senses Brock and bonds with him, granting him powers equal and greater to those of Spider-Man, and imparting knowledge of Spider-Man's secret identity. Venom Venom begins a campaign of torment against Peter, who is still unaware of his existence. He first pushes Peter in front of a moving subway without activating his spider sense, and later terrorizes Spider-Man's wife Mary Jane. Venom baits Spider-Man to his apartment for their first confrontation, where Venom reveals his true identity to Spider-Man, claiming, you may call me Venom. For that's what I'm paid to spew out these days, Spider-Man discovers that the symbiote has completely bonded with Brock and cannot be killed without also killing Brock. Eventually Venom is tricked into weakening himself by expending too much webbing until the suit lacks enough material to produce more. Venom is incarcerated in the vault, from which he makes repeated escapes and escape attempts, only to suffer defeats and returns to the vault. Brock eventually fakes suicide and escapes after being taken to the morgue. During a battle with Spider-Man, the symbiote is seemingly killed by the plague-inducing villain Styx, giving its life to protect Brock. Brock is incarcerated and Spider-Man disposes of the symbiote's remains. The symbiote survives by entering a comatose state to fight off the illness and it returns to Brock, enabling him to again escape from jail. During the escape, the symbiote sexually reproduces and leaves behind its spawn. The offspring quickly bonds to Brock's cellmate, Cletus Cassidy, creating carnage. Venom abducts Spider-Man and transports him to a remote island to do battle. Spider-Man fakes his own death to convince Venom that his vendetta is over. Venom, content with the outcome, resigns himself to life on the island. Spider-Man eventually faces carnage but is unable to defeat him. Spider-Man is forced to ask Venom for help, promising him freedom in exchange. However, after they defeat Carnage, Spider-Man betrays Venom by summoning the Fantastic Four and sending him back to prison. Anti-Hero After seeing a photo of Spider-Man's recently returned parents, Brock escapes from prison, and kidnaps them. During the resulting fight, Brock's ex-wife Anne Wang is nearly crushed under a falling ferris wheel. But Spider-Man saves her. Seeing this act, Venom makes peace with Spider-Man. In Venom, Lethal Protector, Venom moves to San Francisco and acts as the protector of an underground society of homeless people. He is later taken prisoner by the Life Foundation who harvest the last five spawn within the symbiote to create super-powered policemen and Brock is forcibly separated from the symbiote with Spider-Man's help. Brock is reunited with the symbiote and they seemingly destroy his spawn, Phage, Lasher, Riot, Scream, and Agony, before escaping. After saving the homeless people, Venom is accepted into their society and remains their protector. In the 1993 crossover, Maximum Carnage, Carnage re-emerges and begins a massacre in New York City, and Brock returns to help, feeling responsible. Venom finds he is no match for Carnage, and seeks help from Spider-Man, but Spider-Man refuses to work with Venom's violent methods. Venom, accompanied by Black Cat, Cloak, Morbius and eventually a desperate Spider-Man, repeatedly confront Carnage and his allies. 
Venom ultimately tackles Carnage into high-voltage generators, rendering Carnage unconscious and allowing his capture by the Avengers. Brock goes into hiding. Brock returns in the 1994 limited series Separation Anxiety, in which he is captured and separated from the symbiote for a government research project. Venom Spawn, Phage, Lasher, Scream, Riot, and Agony are revealed to still be alive and arrive to free Brock. Seeking his help to gain control over their symbiotes, Brock is ultimately reunited with the symbiote, but the experience forces him to evaluate his relationship with the costume. The 1995, Planet of the Symbiotes Event continued the narrative from Separation Anxiety, with Brock forcing the symbiote to leave him, concerned about how much influence it may be having on him. The symbiote unleashes a telepathic scream of sorrow. and pain that attracts the other members of its species to Earth. The story follows the efforts of Brock, Spider-Man, and Scarlet Spider to stop the invasion and defeat an escaped and empowered Carnage. Brock is forced to bond completely and irrevocably with the symbiote in order to inflict psychic trauma on the symbiotes, causing them to commit suicide. Return to Villainy When Anne is shot by a new Sin Eater, Brock forces the symbiote to bond with her to heal her injuries. In the process she temporarily becomes She-Venom, but Brock demands the symbiote return after Anne loses control and kills a pair of muggers, leaving Anne traumatized. Brock helps kill a new Sin Eater. Anne is taken into custody by the police as they try to hunt Venom and Brock sends her his symbiote so she can escape. As She-Venom she again struggles to control herself with Brock. Weighing and current Spider-Man Ben Riley becoming caught in the middle of a joint DEA-F.B.I. Operation against a major drug smuggler when weighing. And Brock rendezvous at the same location where the drug group are meeting. When Brock takes back the symbiote, and tells him to keep himself and the symbiote away from her after witnessing his brutality against the criminals. Brock is captured in his sewer hideout and put on trial, with Matt Murdock acting in his defense. His symbiote held in check by a chemical inhibitor. Cletus Cassidy is called as a witness, but when the case becomes heated both Cassidy and Brock overcome their inhibitors. Venom, Spider-Man, and Daredevil team up and subdue Carnage. However, before the trial can continue Venom is unexpectedly taken into custody by a secret government organization offering him amnesty in exchange for him becoming their agent. Though Venom at first enjoyed his newfound immunities, he left after being abandoned during a dangerous mission. After receiving a head wound, Eddie suffers amnesia. He is later separated from the symbiote, which is presumed killed by the government overreach committee. The symbiote survives and tracks down the amnesiac Brock, turning him into Venom again. Venom infiltrates Ravencroft prison seeking carnage and absorbs the carnage symbiote. Brock temporarily joins the Sinister Six to get Spider-Man, but after being betrayed by them, he begins hunting down the members for revenge. He ultimately cripples Sandman by biting him and taking out a chunk of his mass, leading to Sandman's apparent death. He also causes serious wounds to Electro and Kraven the Hunter. Venom's rivalry with Spider-Man is renewed when Anne, who lives in fearsome bonding with the symbiote, commits suicide after seeing Brock become Venom. Venom however, believes Spider-Man swinging by Anne's window in his black costume to be the cause. Before he can take revenge however, the symbiote is forcefully removed from him by the human-slash-alien hybrid Senator Ward in order to learn more about symbiosis, an alien race. Secretly operating within the United States government, clones the Venom symbiote. Venom absorbs the clone, gains its knowledge, and decides to carry out the alien's orders. Cancer and post-Venom the 2003 story, The Hunger, introduced new elements to Brock's origin, revealing that Brock had cancer before joining with the symbiote, 
and that it chose to bond with Brock not only for his hatred towards Spider-Man, but also, because the cancer causes the release of adrenaline, which sustains the symbiote. Brock is left reliant on the suit to live, and pursues Spider-Man out of fear that he will take the symbiote back. Rather than for revenge over his lost career, Brock dies after the symbiote leaves him for Spider-Man, not wanting a diseased host. Spider-Man tricks the symbiote into again bonding with Brock, reviving him. When Carnage gives birth to a new symbiote, Venom names it Toxin and hopes to turn it into an ally. When Toxin shows compassion, Venom tries to kill him. Toxin is rescued by Spider-Man and Black Cat. In the 2004 story, Venomous, Brock experiences a crisis of faith and decides to sell the symbiote, knowing he will rapidly die from his cancer without it. Intending to donate the $100 million received from the sale to charity on the grounds that the symbiote would find another host once he dies anyway. The symbiote is purchased by crime boss Don Fortunato for his son Angelo Fortunato. Angelo briefly becomes the second Venom, but proves an unworthy host. And the symbiote abandons him mid-jump allowing him to fall to his death. Upon learning of Angelo's death, Brock feels responsible and attempts suicide by slitting his wrists. Brock next appeared in the 2007 story, The Last Temptation of Eddie Brock where he is rapidly succumbing to cancer, and experiencing hallucinations of, venom. Finding a comatose Aunt May in the same hospital. Dying from a gunshot, the venom hallucination persuades him to kill her. Brock, dressed in a novelty replica of Spider-Man's black costume at the demand of Venom, murders a nurse to test if he can still kill. But ultimately refuses to kill May, because she is innocent. When Peter visits May, he finds Eddie, who has repeatedly cut his own wrists to get rid of Venom. Eddie asks for Peter's forgiveness before jumping out of the window, but Peter manages to catch him. Awakening chained to his bed, Brock finds he can still see Venom, but tells him that he accepts its presence as long as it knows that Brock is in control. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?